All right, uh, so greeting scholars, we are now here, right? Or no, we're now we're officially here. This is the last official class. All right, so uh, uh, yeah, we're here. Let me see, you know, you know the spiel, the main points. Um, this week is the reading period. So I think your final exam will become available this upcoming Sunday at 11, 11 a.m. And Sorry, I'm just thinking. Hmm. I guess this is necessary. Um, yeah, final exam will become available. You'll have access to it for just about five days. The hard deadline is this up, uh, not this Friday, but a week from this Friday for all assignments. It's going to be Friday, December 8th at 11.59 p.m., right? So that's when your final exam is due, and that's when everything locks out, right? Idealistically, uh, hopefully you've completed all other assignments and so that way when you submit your final you're done with the course uh, if you are submitting assignments uh, like late or retroactively i would encourage you to prioritize the exams as that's where you get the most bang for your buck and also you know again i am proud of you guys i know i said it on a monday you know but i just want to reiterate that like again this is not easy right uh, it, it's simple but it's not easy right it's simple in the fact that just you know do the homework you have unlimited attempts i feel like it's simple but it's just not easy because obviously life happens. Math is not for everybody. So doing something like this, you know, especially if you're not like mathematically inclined, which a lot of my students are, you know, this is not a small feat. Um, not everybody can do it. Everybody doesn't make it through, right? I, but I try to help as many people as I can, as best I can within like, you know, where I can, it can be justified and I can get the support of, uh, you know, my, my, my uh, superiors or whatever. Um, so, with today, let's take as much time as we can to just review and just try to maximize our time together. So we're going to go ahead and hop over. We'll start with question 68. Uh, and just kind of keep working on the study guide. Uh, I'll do the best I can with my emails. I, I just, I'm not good with emails. Like when I'm, when I'm not with you guys, because I get so many of them, I just like kind of zone out. And I just check it like at the last possible moment, right? <laughs> I'm the king of procrastination. So it's like, that's, that's why I, I don't, I try to, I try, to, I try to go as gentle as I can on you guys as far as procrastination. I give you as much time as I possibly can, but again, that hard deadline, because I have to start submitting grades after that point, right? Um, uh, this class also has a lab component, so hopefully you all have been collaborating with Dr. Lamar. The lab component, and this does not apply to my 2 p.m., um, but my other courses, um, hopefully you've been collaborating with Dr. Lamar. Her component counts for 10% of her overall grade. For whatever we do together, I'm going to calculate it like normal. I think that um, let me see. I think that like your exams. I know that the exams with the final come up to about eighty percent of our portion, and then the homework counts for ten percent of your overall of, of of our portion, and the quizzes count for ten percent of our portion. I'm going to get a score that there, and then I'm going to scale that to ninety percent. I'm going to say whatever your normal grade would be, I'm going to say times 0.9. And then I'm going to take the grade from the lab component with Dr. Lamar, whatever grade she posts, I'm going to say times 0.1, right? And that's how I'm going to calculate your final grade. Uh, it's still unlimited attempts at all assignments. The system is set to take your highest score. Uh, there's only a 10% late penalty, so you can still earn an A minus on any assignment. I think that's huge, right? I would just, if it were me, I would just do it until I got whatever score I wanted, the highest score possible. Um, and then that repetition is honestly how you learn a lot of this stuff. So, you know, that's how you learn, right? Okay, so I feel like that's enough. Um, you know, I, usually, I mean, I do teach college algebra too, if you're planning on, if, if you like this style, this is my favorite way to present it currently. I like to be remote. Uh, that allows me to kind of engage multiple students across multiple universities and platforms. I might have students all over the world, and um, but it allows me to kind of have a home base, the unofficial guy in the chair, right? <laughs> Spider Spider Man reference, right? Um, so, but any course that I teach is pretty much this format, right? Using Pearson, uh, unlimited attempts, at most a ten percent late penalty, that kind of thing. It's just whatever the next set of information is. Uh, whoever you decide to take, 
for whatever course you decide you have coming up, it's always a good idea to do your research on your professors. I don't know if rate my professor is still a thing, but it's, you know, just dig in there and see if you can find whatever you can on your professors. Um, ask around, ask like your peers, like I'm going to take this course, anybody you recommend and just see what they say. And it's a good idea to have a sense of what to expect from your professors. Um, I was, when I was a student at Morehouse, I definitely was like, overzealous you know my, my peers warned me about a professor and but they had warned me about other professors and i was like this is not bad just do what they say and it's fine it's easy All right but i had this one professor no they were right like i should have listened to them <laughs> he was just like he, i think he was just old he was he was intelligent but i think he was just old and he was just like you know totally disconnected right so i just it kind of killed my little Anyway, I'm going to let that go. You know, obviously it happened. This is years later and I'm still like talking about it, but it's okay. But the moral of the story, you know, do your research on your professors. And it's a good idea to have a sense of what you're getting into. And you want to try to align yourself with whatever professors you feel like you have the highest chance of success. Um, you know, so that's the long and short of all of that. Okay, so this question comes from section 2.1, question 37. For this equation, determine whether the graph of the given quadratic opens up or down. Now, we know that one off the bat because the leading coefficient is positive, so that means it should open up. I'm going to just go ahead and submit that one. Okay. Then part B, find the vertex. Now, we have this vertex formula, which is negative B over 2A. So it's going to be 6 over 2, which is 3. Right. So I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, I think they want an order pair. All right. Type in order pair. So when x is three, we need to find the corresponding y. Let's see. Oh, come on. Okay, this is a little bit of a tangent, and I mean, you know, it's our last class, so we can have some fun. Like it's it's totally okay. Um, obviously, I'm a gamer, right? And so that's what I was literally doing right before class. Somehow, I timed it. I know when I'm doing a match, I get I got to give myself at least thirty four minutes. And if and sure enough, right on the money, it finished right within that time. Um, but like when you're playing like a, a, a 5v5 Battle Royale style game and it's all about cooperation, you know, what do you do when you have like teammates that are just afraid to do anything? Like like they, they choose a role and then they won't do anything. So it's like you either get really, really good and you learn how to fill the missing link or you learn how to just let shit go, right? And that's a powerful life lesson that I learned. And I'm, I'm constantly practicing daily, especially when I game. It, it transfers into other things in that I feel like learning how to let shit go saved my life, right? I definitely had some peers when I was when I was a student. Um, they didn't know how to let stuff go. And they get one bad grade and, you know, they unalive themselves. And I'm like, it's not that serious, right? Um, it's serious, but not that serious because – where there's a will there's a way as long as as long as you have a will there's always some way to get something done if you're talking to somebody and they're not saying what you want to hear you're just talking to the wrong person you always have a choice you always have a choice all right you know and i mean if you really want to take it to i don't you know i have some controversial stuff to say there but it's optimistic but i i know where it can be challenged but i know that they're okay where they are but you know that's i still don't think that's a good idea um but you always have a choice you know, there's always some way to get something done. And if you're talking to somebody and not saying what you want to hear, you're just talking to the wrong person. All right, let me check on Zoom real quick. I know we're not done with this one. Um, I just want to see if we, who we're missing. Let me get these gentlemen. Okay, so these two. Oh, he must have like popped in and out. And so let me make sure. Yeah, I got him. Um, like this. Let me go ahead and mark these guys. All right, and I can let these guys in. Yep, 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 yep. All right, let's keep the party. Let's keep the party. Going. All right. So when x is three, right? So when x is three, let me see. We're going to have nine minus eighteen is negative nine. Minus seven looks like it's a negative sixteen. Negative sixteen. Let's see if that works. Oh no. You know, and then also I just want you guys to be aware that 
you know, you are important, whether you, whether you realize it or not, whether you know it or not, like you have a piece of the puzzle of this grand experience we call being a human. There's something unique that you each and each and every one of you have that nobody else has. Right. You have a unique perspective. And like without your input, without your your unique energy, we're going to be missing a piece of the puzzle and we won't be able to solve whatever it is is going on here. You could be the one that has like the the key the key piece that transforms the whole game. You, and you never know who has that, right? You don't know who it is. It could be me, you, her. It could be somebody down your lineage. It could be somebody that you come across that you like, you say something or do something or just your presence alone, like completely transforms their perspective, right? And they were going to do something nefarious, but just because you exist, you know, you never know how this stuff unfolds, right? So, you know, just stuff like that. Uh, the axis of symmetry is going to be the x coordinate of the vertex, so that's going to be x equals three. Okay. Uh, let's see. Find the x and y intercepts. Uh, I prefer to find the y intercept first, um, but they they're asking for the x intercepts, so we would set y to zero. Uh, we want a factor, right? So is it seven and one, a negative seven and a positive one? Mm-hmm. So when you when you solve it, you're gonna get a negative one and a positive seven. Let me see, one plus six is seven minus seven is zero, right? Okay, I'm gonna go with it. Okay. And then the y intercepts, if we set x to zero, we get negative seven. The y intercept oftentimes is much easier than the x intercept um, because a lot of the terms just cancel out. When you let x be zero, a lot of terms cancel. Okay. So I, I think I've mentioned this before, but another thing I do intend to do at some point, because I'm a heavy gamer and I'm a mathematician, I was like, okay, well, how can we cross those two fields together? And so like in my mind, I'm always thinking, well, I need to look up and see what research has been done on the game of mathematics with chess and then apply that to the type of games that I've played. Um, I also play like Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle, and that uses a lot of RNG, which is r random number generation. And so then it's it's really just a game. It's really more so a game of chance and probability. Um, I, I use probability in these games too. I know one game I'm playing, it's like a, a draw. Like they have these little mini games, and I was like, okay, I know if I get if I have at least this many, one of those should, should hit. So once I hit my mark, then I apply it, and it works. Another way I like to like you know, express my mathematics is through like art and like origami. I do like origami and sculptures. I do painting, drawing, um, dance, music, and rhythm. All of this is an expression of mathematics to me, right? I know we're doing numbers and this is like, I even go, it, it, it even spills over to spirituality. I said it, I said it a lot of like numerology, crystals, healing the body. A, a lot of like diseases and things like that is, is cause and effect, right? Everything that has a beginning has an end. So, if you were able to start this life and not be sick or whatever, then this illness comes about, you know, obviously that's with a grain of salt, um, you know, but that's just how I feel. And I feel like, okay, when something comes along, well, it didn't just come out of nowhere. There has to be a root cause. And a lot of times my, from my experience, I found that a lot of illness is linked to like just our habits. A lot of it's the food. A lot of it's the food. I saw a video the other day was that was linking stress to illness. And it was like, you know, the more stressed out you are, the more you deplete your nutrients and then the more sick you become. Right. So that's why I feel like it's super important to identify what your passion is, what you would do if you had all the money and all the time in the world. What would you do with your time? And then I try to encourage people to do that as much as possible. Um, I, I, I posed that presentation to my nephew over the Thanksgiving break. And his response was play video games. Now, initially, internally, there was a part of me that was like, yo, you can't take care of yourself again. <laughs> this is what I wanted to say to him, but I didn't. And I, you know, I don't know if I should, but I didn't, right? A part of me was like, how are you going to take care of yourself if you just game, right? You can't like generate money, not real money. I mean, you can, but it's difficult. But part of me was like, no, that's what he said. His answer is you don't know how it's going to unfold. You don't know what it's going to be for him. So it's like, okay. You know, and I don't even really want to say that the probability of generating money is low. There, there is something that he can discover walking that path that might activate something in him. Right. So I still feel like him following his heart is the best thing. It's hard up front. But once you find yourself and you find your rhythm, you find your path. You don't you never work a day in your life. You generate 
it's like magic. It's like whatever you need comes. If you're open and you know you kind of fluid to like some of the different routes or whatever, and you be you be, you're honest with yourself. And one of my former students would say, "To thine own self be true." Right. Um, so if you're at least be honest with yourself and walk walk that path, there's something that like you know your spirit team and ancestors and they're trying to show you. The universe is trying to show you. But if we're always stunting and, and you know putting on airs and being fake, I mean you can find something there too. But you know it, it might you might be moving away. You might be taking the hard route. I don't know. This I'm just I'm just ranting because I can. <laughs> you know? um, just trying to say words of encouragement. Let me see. Okay, I think we're looking good here. And then just because it's the last day, let's go ahead and generate another number. Let's look at question nine. Let's look at question nine. And like. I don't believe in uh, capitalism at all. Um, oh, wait a minute. Graph. Okay, so it's a parabola. U-shaped curve. Uh, the vertex, I'm just going to click on two points. I just click randomly. Now, we said our vertex, negative B. I think we had three negative 16. Let me see. Two A, negative A, three. And then I think it was negative 16, nine, negative nine negative 16. So let's put the vertex at 3, negative 16. And all I'm doing is dragging it into the proper position, dragging that vertex into the proper position. And then a simple one would be like if we just move one to the left or right, or actually we can do when x is 0. When x is 0, the corresponding y was negative 7. So I'm going to just drag the second point to 0, negative 7. And that's simple. All right, let's save that. And uh, another reason I don't mind ranting today, just, you know, going off from these tangents is because I feel like me talking about this stuff is enough, right? At this stage, at this point, I don't really know what more I can say that's different or that clicks. So, you know, I, in all honesty, I do feel like, you know, we've talked enough about math. I just want to kind of throw some other stuff in there. But how math pertains to other things. Um, again, I do use it in my gaming I use it in a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> it definitely got me in trouble trying to use it with people, like just mathematical concepts, because people, uh, did I connect? What the heck? Oh, check the answer. I was like, I know I, I, know I graphed this thing. Um, a lot of times what I found that is that when it comes to people, they'll, um, they'll do things out of spite, right? Just, just, to, just to be onerous, right? Even if you're trying to help them or this, that, and the other, when they just decide that they just don't want to cooperate, you have to, I, I've learned again to let shit go and you have to like allow them, you have to honor their divine will and they have a right, they have a divine right to choose for themselves, right? And so what I've learned when it comes to like, as, as being a truth seeker, seeking out the truth, um, the truth cannot be told, only realized, right? So it's like, you know, when I started that journey of, health and wellness um you know i was discovering like the effects that meats and the process ingredients and the artificial ingredients with the dyes and i was finding out like how this was affecting the body i, I was i was i got really really sick when i was a student at morehouse i was sick hospitalized like two weeks to months at a time every year around finals and somehow by the good grace of god i still graduated on time not wanting any money so that's when i knew like okay i'm here on purpose, right? I'm not going anywhere until it's my time. No, despite my best efforts, right? There's nothing I can do other than just lean into it, right? Um, so I realized that I'm supposed to be here. Now, I don't know the full extent, and sometimes I can feel myself resisting, but you can't have an experience like that and not acknowledge that you were supported in this realm and beyond, right? Um, so I'm just doing my best to play the game of life. I definitely am an ultimate gamer because that's all I do pretty much around the clock. Um, but I try to extend those experiences and those lessons to other realms. Um, you know, I do landscaping, cleaning, painting, like interior painting, exterior painting, power washing. Uh, I've been thinking of ideas to like this time of year, it's just endless amounts of leaves. Like you'll pick up the leaves and with the hours, it's like you didn't even do anything. And I'm like, now, I know some people use the leaves for compost, right? You can pick up the debris, collect it, put a little bit of dirt in there, and like any food that like will degrade, like banana peels, and apple skins or whatever, you put it in there and it makes like a nutrient-rich, nutrient-rich nutrient, nutrient rich, rich 
dirt for like planting and growing stuff. So I'm always thinking like, instead of just throwing these leaves down the hill, how could I collect them and capitalize on them? Because we're in a capitalist society, which I don't really believe in. But again, when in Rome, you got to play the game, right? Um, at some point, I do want to start like learning how to clean my own water. You have to look up the laws on like collecting your own rainwater. Some places it's illegal to do that. So you kind of need to be aware of that. Like I, there was a story of a guy that had a bucket on his front lawn just turned up. An officer saw it and find him, saying that it's illegal for him to do that. And when you look at the books, but this is it's so it's so sinister because they basically don't want us to have access to anything. All this, all the abundance of this realm of this earth, everything is free. The water is free, seeds are free, the the food, everything is free. The land is free, but they they always trying to find ways to charge us for this stuff. They always trying to find ways to charge us for things that are free, right? And that's that's it's sickening it really pisses me off right so i had again through my experience i had to learn instead of complaining about everything don't I, i've learned to acknowledge the complaint right don't don't suppress my complaint i'm having that experience i'm having that frustration for a reason and so then it dawned on me okay if i really want this thing to get resolved because it's irritating me because i notice it because it caught my attention that means i'm supposed to be the one to take some action to resolve the matter right like like and and but it's it's wild because now I'm aware of like different ways to get clean drinking water from anywhere in the world for free. Uh, there, I, I've seen one schematic where the claim is that they were in the middle of the desert. They have these nets, these like fine mesh nets that they put vertical in the desert in the air, and as the as the air passes through the nets, water condenses on them and and collects at the bottom, and they collect free clean drinking water so if, if these nets can collect clean water out of thin air if you can collect water out of the air in the desert that means you can collect clean water or essentially clean anywhere so so i had a i have a friend that um she and again i'm just i feel like we've talked about math enough so i'm using this as a platform to just talk about some other stuff i have a friend that she used to do these like um enrichment programs for the for children um well, she would just do these science demonstrations. I thought it was fantastic. And like one of her presentations was on how to clean water. And so, she, you know, she kind of talked about carbon and I, uh, I think it's carbon and charcoal, like, but it's carbon and how, how good it filtered, how it filters out most things. Um, and so just this whole science of how to clean water, that's like the basics of life, right? You know, can you find clean water? Um, and then I start to study like nature and I'm like, okay, how is it that like these massive trees can pull water from the ground all the way up through the whole tree with no, no electricity or anything like that? Like, how are they pulling it up? And I'm under the impression that they're using like capillary action. So I'm like, okay, if these plants can just naturally, you know, with no energy, no effort, pull water from a low space to a high space, well, now we have like at least two different techniques to do that, right? We talked about the mesh nets. What if we put those nets, you know, like on top of our house and collected the water up high? If you, if you, and they just let it run, you know, you collect the water in a vat. Once you have stored water raised up, that's potential energy, and you can use that to generate clean energy. Um, recently, so we can either mimic the capillary action of trees or just install nets up high and they'll naturally collect water over time and then you clean the water and you can use it to generate power and again i'm just sharing this stuff because i've been sitting on it for like decades and i'm like well if i'm not going to take action let me at least plant this seed as somebody that might be able to take it and like you know maybe create something from it um there was another one i wanted to share so then just on the topic of water um i don't know if y'all ever seen this movie called what the bleep do we know and the secret but in what the bleep do we know there's this scene where they're walking through like a subway and they're giving a tour where they're talking about this scientist that did this study on water and like how thoughts affect water right so i'm going to put a pin right there um and then we'll come back to that and then the other story that i just wanted to bring to your attention on water I i've recently seen where people have been making and i even saw one just like a few hours ago, another one, like a third different version of this this iteration, where people are making basically water powered batteries, right? You through hydrolysis. And it seems like now I, I haven't tested it, so I, I don't know if I can actually get it to work, but 
they might, I mean, so basically you have like these metal plates, these steel plates separated by like rubber, you know, rubber tubes. So there's spacing and you, you hook it up to like a battery. I'm not sure how the whole process works, but when you apply a current into it, uh, it starts bubbling and I guess the hydrogen and oxygen separates and it gives off like hydrogen gas. It, it somehow you're able to collect a gas off of it and generate electricity, right? But off of a water power battery, like you can dip it into water, it'll start generating electricity just from the process, and then it stops. Now again, I haven't tested it, but I've seen it at least three different iterations. Now, if I did a little bit of research and I dug, I can confirm or deny if it works. That's one of my favorite things to do is say, okay, is this fact or cap? You know, like they show something and it's like, okay, do I have those ingredients? Can I confirm or deny what they're doing, right? So I'll test it for myself whenever possible. Uh, I really am a scientist. I'm a chemist. I just do math as a as a day job. But, you know, I'm my, the way my mind works, like once I decided I want to do something, I just obsess over it until I like just check it for myself, right? Um, I want to do, I want to get my hands on like a 3D printer and start like, I've seen where people have made, this this father son combo they built their own they 3d printed their own lamborghini like you know they 3d printed all the parts and i think lamborghini did like give them some of the supplies like some of the different parts but essentially most of it was 3d printed so then i'm like okay if they can print it 3d print a lamborghini but it took them like five years right but i'm like okay if they can do that well what's the limit what are the limits to what you can and cannot 3d print in my mind i'm like well can we 3d print a house Right now, obviously, you've seen there are there are these like, you know, giant 3D printers that can print a whole house. You know, it's like this concrete and they just kind of goes around and press the whole house. But I'm like, well, can you just print all the parts? And I know it'll take a long time. But what if you just print all the small parts and put them together to build a house? Now, you need the materials and all in time and all this. But, you know. It's just sitting there waiting for somebody to do it. So. So we talked about the water power battery, and then let's hop back to the time. Let me backtrack to um, the where they were in the subway. So this scientist, I, I can't, I can't remember his name. I can't think of it. It's like Akimoto or something like that. He's a Japanese scientist, but he did this. He did this study to see the effect of thoughts, the effect that thoughts had on water, right? So he had like three different vats and one vat, he just did nothing to it. It was just regular water, right? He did, he did nothing, no kind of nothing to it. And the second vat, he might, he, I think he did like, I love you. He got a priest to bless it with like, I love you and just put this energy or chi or this thought of I love you onto the water vat. And then on the third one, he put like, I hate you, I want to kill you, stuff like that, low energy, right? So he took samples from each three vat and then he, I think he like, froze the samples he looked at the crystalline structure form from the different vats right so when you when he looked at the one with positive energy i mean the the structures were like symmetrical beautiful like like these beautiful like ice crystal crystalline structures really really beautiful um and then when he looked at like i hate you and the negative one that kind of stuff the the crystalline structures were like deformed asymmetrical like they looked really distorted and weird and i want to say that if, if my memory serves me correctly, the one that looked the, the worst was the one that was neglect. The one that he didn't do anything to that was neglected, no kind of energy. It, it had like the worst crystalline structure. So then his conclusion was, if thoughts have these, these effects on water and we're 70% water, imagine the effect that thoughts have on us, right? And that can be, and you can, there. You, if you just do a search for like water experiment, you'll see it where people have done it with water, there's another version where people have done it with rice, the same little thought thought experiment, you know, thinking on things. Um, they did it with rice and kind of let it sit over time and see what effect it had. So these are the kind of things that I like to study, right? Um, I, I always use my imagination in an ideal world where I had unlimited time and unlimited money, what would I do? Then it, it took me a while to realize it, but I, I realized that I am, I'm a creator. Right, I'm a I'm a um, I'm an inventor, a creator, divine being in that in that sense, and so I just need to start making things. I have I have ideas. I have a lot of them. They just kind of keep coming. Um, you know, I'm kind of indifferent about capitalizing on them. I don't really believe in that because another thing that tends to happen 
when people make the like make these discoveries as far as like free energy and water power batteries, a lot of times they get unalived by like the the people that's in power right now. Like again, because it's a capitalist capitalistic society, these companies have a vested interest in suppressing free energy and like things that free people. If we were aware that we can pull energy out of thin air, why would we pay a power bill? If we actually took the time to figure out how to generate our own water and clean our own water, why would we pay a water bill? So they don't want people to be aware of stuff like this so they can keep charging us out the yin yang for everything that's free because they tr they're banking on us being lazy and afraid. All right. So that's the power of like institutions like Morehouse, you know, because these are places where people can actually start to like study this, these kind of things and like you know, dive into some of these different concepts in whatever form, right? Um, I mean, there's more, there's more. It just kind of keeps going. It just kind of keeps going. But again, energetically, we're in the age of Aquarius. So it's like, we're moving, in, we're in a realm where that, what that means is that, you know, there's no privacy, you know? So, uh, so how they had so much power and they moved in like the shadows and they would lie to us and, and, you know, bamboozle people everybody's waking up and everybody's starting to realize that they've been that we've been bamboozled we've been lied to. we've been duped people are starting to realize it and so these people in, that have their power in these shadow organizations they're losing power because they on they kept their power by staying in the shadows but the more that people know or are aware of these different concepts and techniques the less power that they have until we reach uh, a critical mass right so again i'm just doing this because it's the last day I think that like it's important to kind of just at least put this on your radar. Not that you gotta do your, not that you. Now, obviously, I do encourage you to do your own research. Don't take my word for any of this stuff. I'm just sharing what my experience has been. I get stuff wrong. I'm a human, just like you, right? Um, I, and I'm doing the best that I can, like everybody else, right? So, with with my level of awareness, I'm doing my best to expand my awareness and my consciousness, and then like assimilate it and do better, do the best that I can with whatever I can, right? Okay, so that was a fun little rant, right? Well, we'll and we'll see. Like, I mean, it might evolve some more, but again, I'm just doing it just, just as a closer. Uh, the center and the radius of the circle. So this is already in, I guess it's called the standard form. Um, except for it needs to be X minus and Y minus. So the center is going to be negative 5, negative 4, and the radius is going to be square root of 11. All right. So I feel like... In this day and age, we're in a realm where you don't necessarily you don't necessarily need to know all the answers, but you need to at least know how to find the answers, right? Um, it's, obviously, it's better if you just know the answers, um, but what's just as good because when you're in the real world, you're going to have access to your resources, so you can do research and you can you can dig, right? So I feel like as long as you have some way of arriving to the conclusions that's a great place to be that's not a bad place to be right at least if you know how to find it now obviously it doesn't you know it can it can kind of hinder you in a proctored environment but that's a proctored environment right in the application you have access to everything the radius is going to be the square root of 11. square root of 11. let's hang out for like 10 more minutes generate let's go to question 60. It's trying to give you some kind of words of encouragement or something to just like put a little bit of spin, a personal spin on the energy that can help you guys however I can. Now, obviously, I'm limited in what I can do. I can't just like give grades, but I feel like allowing unlimited attempts is my way of like assist assisting you guys or only doing a 10% late penalty is like, I guess something that I can do. Um, you know, express the given function as a composition of two functions. So uh, this is called a composition of function f composed g of x where the sec this means the second function inside the first function right so if we were to write f of x like normal we would replace each x with the entire function g right so here a possible inside function could be like x cubed right the x cubed minus five and the exterior function could be b yeah let's just go with b that one looks proper Okay, let's, let's look at question two. See, I'm losing my voice. I'm, I'm almost to my limit. 
right? I don't know if, if anybody studies like astrology or this, this uh, system called human design. Human design is like so trippy. It's trippy. Like I was having all these experiences. I was like, man, why, why is it that I keep having these experiences? Everybody I come across is responding to me to this way. It's like, what is going on? And then I was, I'm, I'm still part of this organization. I just haven't been in a while. I just kind of, kind of went off on my own. Um, but they, we used to study the system called human design and in that system, it was explaining everything I was experiencing. I was like, Oh, it's not me. That's just the nature of the energy. I was like, okay, let me learn how to work with the energy. But yes. Yeah, so it, it, that helped me too. That helped me on my journey to just get a little bit of perspective, to be a little bit more patient, to be gentle with myself, right. To give myself some grace and allow myself space to just be me. It's okay. If I want to be angry or upset or lazy or whatever it is that I want to be, it's okay. Right. I have that right as a divine being. That's my right. Now, obviously, being in this realm, you know, there's consequences, you know, <laughs> like, what was that, uh, Key and Peele? Consequences. <laughs> but, but I'm in a space where I'm allowing myself and processing and saying, okay, why am I getting upset? You know, what is it that the universe is trying to show me? Do I need to, like, let something go? Do I need to slow down? Does this need attention? Like, why am I getting this feeling? Like, instead of saying, oh, you're crazy, like, no. You get in this feeling for a reason, just slow down, pause for a moment and ask yourself like, you know, why are you having this experience? Uh, Distance formula, distance between P and Q. Uh, I'll I'll put the formula here. I'll take some notes here. So the distance between two points P and Q, P and Q, oh, come on, P, there you go, that's fine. So the distance between two points is going to be the square root. Um, it's going to be what? X sub 2 minus X sub 1 quantity squared plus Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 quantity squared. Okay. Another, I don't even know what you would call this. But I remember I was I had this, I was I was given a, a similar presentation to students in the past. Once upon a time, I used to have this philosophy that like everything happens for a reason, right? Like you know, and it, and it it's it's almost there, but it was still a little bit that was missing with that with that. And so students were like, "Well, how do you explain you know sexual a like when when you know when somebody's assaulted or whatever?" And, you know, I I tried to stick to my guns and say that, like, oh, the person chose that in their previous life, but it never really set well with me. And so this group, that the same group that I was talking about earlier, offered a a rebuttal. Like, this is, like, years down the line. They were like, well, instead of we chose it and everything happens for a reason, they were like, some things do happen that's unintentional, right? Like, when we supposedly choose everything before we come here, you know, some things were accidental, but they, their their response was that our support team, like our ancestors and spirit guides and beings like that, they were like, they're master remixers. So they can take any any experience and spin it and make us stronger, right? Um, you know, it, it basically parallels that whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger kind of thing. And then like, I think I had another friend that would say, um, life's not getting any easier or it life doesn't get any easier we just get stronger all right like it, it doesn't get any easier but we get more savvy we get more efficient we get harder better faster stronger technological right so life doesn't get easier we just get stronger we get smarter we get better we get faster we get more efficient all right on this journey um if you want a good watch if you haven't seen it I would encourage everyone uh, on, I think it's on Netflix, this series called The Good Place. Uh, I think they had a fantastic conclusion um, at the end of it. And basically what it is, it's this series, it's like a comedy, it's a comedy and there's something else blended with it, but it's a comedy where it's it's following these four protagonists where they've just entered the afterlife. And so they just have some pretty interesting concepts in there. Um, I remember thinking to myself, I was like, Okay, if if we if suppose in some world, you know, we're an eternal being, we're all powerful, all knowing, omnipotent, you know, omniscient. uh, We knew everything. We had all power. We lived forever. If we if we were that being. To me, 
it seems like boredom would be a real concern for a being like that. Right? Like if you had all power, like I know when I'm when in the past when I used to play games and it was on God mode, I would get tired of it and I wouldn't want to play anymore. Right? Because you knew everything was gonna happen. So one narrative is that that's who we really are at our core. And then it's like to me, I was like, okay, if we are these powerful beings like that, then what we experience in this realm makes sense and to some degree, right? Like, well, we definitely are not bored because we don't know, we don't remember anything. I think we're, I get the impression that like we are gods with amnesia, right? We just, we are these all powerful beings. We just somehow got disconnected and we don't know it. We don't remember it. And so, which is like, that makes sense. Like, it's almost like we're like Thor when he lost his powers, right? And we're just stuck in that realm for a while. I don't think it's forever. I think it's just for X amount of time. Eventually, I think it all comes back and then we go forward from there, right? But this, you know, that's part of the unique experience of this realm, right? It, it, some people describe this realm like Earth or whatever. It's like a, a, a cosmic school. as a school where you, you learn unique things here. Like we have free will here, but, you know, we don't really know who we are. Right. And so I feel like in that lack of identity, that explains like our, our suffering, our strife while we argue and fight with each other. Um, I'm about to wrap this up. One of the quotes goes, um, if you can't see God in all, then you can't see God at all. Right. And like they were like, when you start to awaken, you start to like notice that essence in everything. You can see like this rainbow kind of thing. And like then when you and like another quote goes, no tree has branches foolish enough to argue amongst itself. Right. Um, again, I feel like we argue and fuss and fight and we have all this suffering and strife because we don't know who we are. We don't know that we're these divine, infinite beings. We don't know that, oh, that person over there is just me in another lifetime. But there, as time progresses, you start to discover more and more cases of like reincarnation. I, I was watching a video the other day. This, this kid was reincarnated and solved his own murder. Like, He, when he became like two or three or something like that, he was starting to able to talk. And like, he was reincarnated back into his family, something like that. And then he was like, oh yeah, that's where I used to do this and do this. And she was like, or can I have my toys? And like, the parents were like, what? And, you know, they were able to like pinpoint, you know, accurately, like what happened to them, who killed them, where the murder, where the body is, where the murder weapon is. Like, how do you explain something like that? Like as a scientist, You know, you have to acknowledge that this person was here before. There's no way that that youth like that should know that, right? So, you know, this realm is really interesting. It's more than meets the eye. Um, things are not always what they seem. Uh, and so it's really, as, as much chaos is going on, this is still a really beautiful place. A really, And this is a really exciting time to be alive. Um, there's a lot of, like, I keep, every time I sit and think about it, I get this strong sense that there's a lot of good coming right around the corner. Like if we can just hold on, just let that bullshit kind of like fly past, don't even like just survive. And we're going to experience like a return to glory. Like that's the, that's the sense that I always get. And so with that, you know, we're going to go ahead and close out the session here. Uh, you guys are awesome. You know, um, you guys are awesome. Um, yeah. All right. From one beautiful mind to another, guys. Take care. Good luck with everything, and I'll do my best to help you. Um, you know, I'll do the best I can via email or whatever. All right, guys. Take care. Peace. Thank you, Professor. Hey, Professor. Can I talk to you for a second? Let's see if there's anybody left here. Excuse me, Professor. Ooh. Ooh. They missed it. This one. Yeah, I'm here. I just couldn't. I was just having trouble unmuting. Yeah, go ahead. Hey guys, thank you, Hibby. Excuse me. Yeah. Hi, how are you doing today? I was just um staying. I want to ask you because I had um sent you an email a few weeks ago. I think it's probably about two weeks ago at this point. Um, hmm. I had like a really impactful loss in my family. So mm -hmm. I was off campus for like the last two weeks up until like a couple of days ago. Um, and I've been like dealing with that loss. So I wasn't, I didn't log on to class, but I was still trying to like do the work. So I was wondering if those absences that I had, I think it was like two or three that I had, 
Um, and they would be counted as what happened? What's your last name? Shepard Baker. I sent you an email, but do you never replied to it? I'll, so I'll just mark. I'll mark you as excuse. Don't worry about it. Okay, I, yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, you know, do what you need to do, and you, you intend on finishing like right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm trying to um catch up on. I think I had to make up a lecture, so I'm trying to catch up on a lecture and, and the homework for that. And I'll be current with the exam and all that stuff, and I'll do that by um by the eighth. Okay. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh huh. Yeah, have a good one. You as well. Take care, Mister Pfeiffer. Yes. I haven't had the best connection with internet, but I got you now. Can you like inform me on what I've missed? Uh, what do you uh you mean today? Yeah. Um, nothing like I, I was just I was really more so just ranting today. Um, we we really just review for the final a little bit, and I just kind of talk. And all of this is like recorded, so you can always pull it up on my any. I think all of our sessions I load a copy into uh YouTube, right? So you could always watch it there as well. But it was it was really uh, reviewing for the final was for a little bit, but more of it was just me kind of like talking about random stuff. That final review, uh, that's 100 questions. You said it's not graded, right? Yeah, if it says not graded, it's just for practice. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, have a good day. You as well. Oh, wait, one more question. Uh -huh, I'm here. You said the final is going to be online, right? Yes. All right, cool. Appreciate it. All right. Any others, gentlemen, you guys there? Going once, going twice. Let me stop to share. Yeah. Um, I think that came up when we were talking. Uh, if you're still on the call, let me see. Yeah, the December eighth is the hard deadline for all assignments, and I think we we settled it with Mister. I know there was another student. Oh, that was him. Okay. Hello. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? I guess you're okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Ali, Ali, oxygen free. Testing, testing. Can you hear me? Ali, Ali, oxygen free. Can you hear me? Okay.